Tonight, Georgia says it cannot legally shut down two plants, releasing cancer-causing toxins in Metro Atlanta. Today, leaders from the facilities met with Governor Kemp to talk about the public outcry over all of this. Doug Richards, live at the state capitol, explaining Sterigenic's new plan to scrub the air coming out of its plant near Smyrna. Doug, this is a fascinating story. It seemingly has no end. Well, Jeff, uh, presumably that new plan was discussed uh, during a closed door meeting that uh, some of the leaders of the two companies involved here had with uh, Governor Kemp uh, here at the Capitol late this afternoon. The uh, governor and the uh, other folks met today looking at wanting to discuss what was, what was happening at these particular plants. We saw four people enter the governor's office shortly before 3 p.m. A man identifying himself as a representative of Sterigenics declined my request for a chat. They entered the governor's office and then apparently exited for another door at the Capitol. I think that they need to shut down immediately. Monday night, residents and environmental regulators met in Cobb County. State officials have said that the Sterigenics plant in Smyrna and the BD Bard plant in Covington are emitting cancer-causing ethylene oxide within safe levels. Yet they've asked the Sterigenics plant operators to emit even less. We want the facility to do more. We want him to go as far as the technology will allow. State officials said Monday night the Smyrna plant has agreed to a plan to reduce its output of ethylene oxide. 100 parts per million is the legal limit. The state says the plant has agreed to reduce it to two parts per million. To do that, they'll put the entire building under a negative pressure vacuum to scrub the air. The agreement gives them till January to do it 24 weeks from now. It might shock people, but the facility has always complied with all federal requirements, and they continue to comply with federal requirements. Dika Kuo of the state EPD told us Monday night that one option not on the table is closing down the plant. We're on a very shaky legal ground to go shut down the facility. I don't think it would stand in court. And presumably that perhaps came up uh, during the meeting with the governor, although the governor's office has not disclosed any of the details of the closed door meeting. And it appears that the Sterigenics folks uh, who were in the meeting with the governor left out of a different door away from our eye shot. So uh, the meeting uh, was mid-afternoon, late afternoon today, uh, and uh, met with the governor. Back to you. All right, Doug, thank you. While well, Georgia says it cannot legally shut down the facilities here, Illinois' EPA succeeded in temporarily shutting down a Sterigenics plant that was near Chicago. This move came after independent test results showed significantly higher levels of the toxin in the air than what was previously reported. The Chicago plant has since reopened, but there are now stricter laws in place for the emissions. The company is still facing dozens of lawsuits in Illinois, and this week, 32 new lawsuits were filed against the company. At a news conference today, some of the plaintiffs blamed the company for the cancer that they have been battling for years. I was exposed for almost a decade. I worked just a block and a half from their secret off-gassing warehouse, and I got breast cancer. I have no family history of it. I have all of my siblings who are out of the house prior to me are healthy, but I was exposed. Ethylene oxide is a colorless gas. It has a, a slightly sweet odor. It's mostly used to create other chemicals like antifreeze or sterilize medical equipment, but it can pose some very serious health risk. That according to the National Cancer Institute, it's commonly linked with lymphoma and leukemia, but stomach and breast cancers could also come from exposure as well.